All right, weekly here on Off the Bench, we catch up with LSU head football coach Ed Ogeron every Tuesday as Coach O is here getting ready for Alabama. Last week in the bye, but as Coach O updated yesterday, his team is uh, dealing with uh, with a COVID uh, issue. He couldn't give the numbers on the update, couldn't talk specifically, but it seems like LSU is, uh, is trending in the wrong direction there as far as the numbers go. Coach O is here with us uh, just like he is every week on Off the Bench. Good morning, Coach. Good morning, guys. Competition Tuesday in Baton Rouge. Ready to go. Absolutely, Coach. How was uh, how was Tell the Truth Monday in Baton Rouge? Great. The guys were fired up yesterday. You know, we're playing Alabama. There was a different step in their step. We had an excellent Monday practice. Two things, Coach, and, and I know that you can't sp- speak specifically on it, but just any updates uh, since the last time you spoke to the public yesterday afternoon on, on the numbers and, and the COVID issue that your team is dealing with. You know, uh, Jack and uh, – Mickey, I work on that. It's very fluid. Uh, it changes. It seems like it changes every every six hours, stuff like that. Uh, you know, who's going to be in quarantine? Who's getting tested? So it's very fluid right now. Not much has changed from yesterday, but I expect some more results today. Do you have a deadline? Do you have a time in, in, in when you know that uh, the, the game or or, or the, the the game uh, decision will be finalized? No, you know, that's, that's obviously that's out of my control. You know, the league office will uh, look at the numbers and they'll make a, a determination. And uh, right now, we're ready to play. Uh, we're going to play Alabama. It's a big game for us. So we, we're preparing to play. So, speaking of the game, Coach, you're coming off of a bye week. And when you look at that's like the ultimate self evaluation period, right? And right. when you look at the year thus far, you played so many young guys. Uh, yeah. which, which which player, and maybe it's not even the young guy, but which player to you in this season has shown the most improvement in the first half? Well, you know, you know, you look at B.J. O'Jaleary. You know, you got to look at him. Uh, the, the job he's done coming in as a freshman, making the plays he's made. Look at T.J. You know, T.J. Finley, the first game he played, he was outstanding. I think those guys have shown a lot of a lot of uh, promise. Uh, Eric Gilbert has shown a lot of promise. As, as we know, we got to get him the ball more, a big time target. So, so those guys to me stick up, stick out in my mind. Uh, yeah, and, and I want to talk about Eric Gilbert, right? Because he has had games where he's really flashed and he's gotten targeted. And like you look at something like the Auburn game, and they're scheming up a bunch of stuff for their three hundred pound tight end. Is there going to be a more concerted effort to scheme things specifically for Eric? <clears throat> yes, I think we need to split them up more, get him the ball more, get him the ball early. Yeah. You know, sometimes we get him the ball too late in the game. You know, I, I thought in the uh, Missouri game we had an outstanding plan for him, especially on those goal routes. Uh, I thought he had a big game there. But the more we get him the ball, the better off we're going to be. Coach, speaking of, right, go back to the bye week real quick, and, and you're talking about recruiting, the success you guys have had. Um, safety play ha- has has been an area of need, and, and you go out and get two of the top safeties in the country. I know you can't speak specifically on name on those guys, but just the success that you had in the off week uh, on the defensive side of recruiting. Yeah, I'm very proud of our staff. You know, I, you know we have unlimited calls to our guys. Uh, we FaceTiming. Uh, Bill Bush has done a tremendous job of recruiting for us. Uh, Corey Raymond, Kevin Falk, Mickey Joseph. Derek Banaski does a great job of, of, of kind of organizing everything for us in here. We have power hour. We talk to like 35, 40 guys maybe a night. We're always constantly talking to guys on the phone. And, again, the LSU brand is hot. They still remember last year. They know the LSU Tigers are going to uh, have a young team, going to bounce back. So everything's positive as far as recruiting. And, and, and speaking of the 2021 class, Coach, which – Continue to climb up the ranks. Maybe one area which is a little light is offensive line. If you look at your roster yeah. right now, a little thin there as well. Yeah. Um, what are the kind of plans here in this, this this closing portion of this cycle to try to bump up those O line numbers? Yeah, that's a big need. You know, we're we're definitely uh, we have one that we're very excited about. We're, we're very close to one or two more well, outstanding players across the country. We can get them. And then add a couple of more, maybe a junior college player, maybe a graduate transfer. Uh, we're gonna see what's out there. We're putting it, putting everybody, all our marbles in one box. See which one's the best one. We're gonna choose them. But I think I think we're gonna end up having an excellent offensive line recruiting class. Mm. Coach, how much does this game mean to recruiting? Because I mean, it seems like you and and just a, a collective of other schools are, are really recruiting the same guys. Uh, how yeah. much does this game mean to it? Oh yeah. Every 
everybody loves to come to it. You know, this would this would be usually be a, a big recruiting weekend, as you guys know. The, the town would be buzzing, and uh, everybody would be there. So now, now obviously, uh, not a lot of players will be here. Uh, they have to, if they have to, they have to come on their own. We can't host them, but everybody's going to be watching. It's a big game for everybody. Coach, uh, we're talking to LSU head football coach Ed Ogeron here and off the bench. Um, when, when you go into a game like this and you're coming from the kind of underdog status, uh, does that change how you approach it in any way? Like, does that make you more free to be riskier, to take more chances, to try different things? Sure. Yeah, you throw you throw everything you can. You go to this game and you, ch- you give everything that uh, you give your ch- uh, team a chance to win in every 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 shot. Maybe a fake. Here, uh, uh, gain of possession here, uh, go for it. When you usually win, go for it. Uh, those are those type of games. You have to do that, these type of games. Uh, and, and, Coach, defensively, obviously, that's where a lot of the uh, corrections people are looking for to take place. Um, what happened over the last couple of weeks in terms of progressing there, and and yeah. how do you feel about, like, like things that we, we talk about almost weekly now at this point, which is, like, keeping contained and setting the edge? Yeah. You know, we had we had problems with force setting the edge. I do believe we've worked a couple of different techniques to where we're fixing that. Uh, better communication. Uh, that was one area that we attacked in open day and also explosive plays. Yeah. We gave up way too many explosive plays, explosive passes, and explosive runs. The explosive runs were setting the edge, so we fixed that. The explosive plays more or less being in the right place at the right time and making a play. Coach, you mentioned B.J. Ujolari earlier in the interview, and he has been fantastic, the true freshman. Um, can, can you talk more about his progression in year one and kind of the expectation that he's setting for himself for the, the, the back end of this season and into the future for him? Yeah, yeah. you know, he's a great third-down guy. He's a great pass rusher. What, what we need to do is put a little weight on him, get him just a little bit stronger so he's better at the point of attack, especially when he plays the five technique when he's on the offensive tackle. I think he's kind of outman there. When he plays a 330-pound tackle on a run blocking scheme, just because of his weight, so he needs to get a little bit bigger and stronger. We need to put him a little bit more on the edge and let him make plays. Uh, Coach, yesterday in your press conference, um, you talked about something that I don't think I was aware of, and I found pretty fascinating. So, when when you were interim at USC, you think you all beat number four Stanford? You said with 12 defensive players yes. available to yes. your yes. roster. So, what is that like? The 11 starters and one backup? Yes, and I'll never forget Coach Pete was on the sideline, and, you know, Stanford would run the power. And this is what it was, power, 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 putt. <laughs> so we, had, we played great. We, our guys were fired up. They, they, uh, it was a big win for us. We went for it on fourth and two. We made it. We kicked the winning field goal. They stormed the, they stormed the Coliseum floor. So, you know, games like that are fun. Hey, you got you got to pull up. You got you to gotta check your guts. It's a gut check and go after it. So it, it's got to be such an odd feeling as a player because you're looking around and it just the, the sideline probably feels like empty at that point. How do you kind of how, how how do you keep up their energy? How do you get them motivated? Like I I have to imagine that today's competition Tuesday is going to feel a bit odd with the lack of numbers. Well, I got to say this, T. Bob. Uh, yesterday I was interested to see. I could always tell when I walk in the meeting the energy. The energy of the team was was phenomenal. The guys were. Was smiling. They had energetic. We had a great practice yesterday. They fired me up. So, so they understand the magnitude of this football game. Uh, they hear it all there. You know what? They want to play, and they want to give their best against Alabama, and they're going to play to win. Can you talk about the team you're getting prepared for? What are the challenges that you'll face on Saturday? You know, great offense. Obviously, Steve Sarkeesian has done a great job. Mac Jones has done a tremendous job operating the offense. Matt G. Harris one of the best backs we'll face all year. Great offensive line. Devontae Smith's a great receiver. The same Jeff. That's the same Jeff and Waddell got hurt. Excellent player. They have an excellent scheme. They'll beat you with the deep ball. They'll take shots. Their offensive line is probably one of the best offensive lines we've seen in a while. Yeah, and that, and that's what I keep going back to as well, Coach. The, the Bama line's very solid. So if, if that's the case, how do you try and or do you like like how, how do you try and beat that O line? Is it through scheme? Yeah. Is it through like stunts? Like, like how do you try to gain an advantage? Yeah. Yeah, any which way we can. You know, uh, obviously we got to be in the right place at the right time. We've got to tackle, and you know those double team blocks. You got to be strong in them. So you got you got to be big and strong in there. Uh, you got to you got to be able to play their counter plays. They try to trap you. They try to run the ball inside the tackles. They got an outside toss play. It's got to be tough 
tough at the point of attack. Competition Tuesday. Over on go. yeah, absolutely. Over on the Ponderosas this afternoon. Appreciate the update to uh, from Coach O this morning. Get him right, Coach. We'll see you Saturday. Thank you. Go tight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There he is, Coach Ogeron, checking in this morning from uh, from LSU football as uh, LSU and Bama scheduled to play on Saturday. We'll wait and see on on the news. There we asked Coach Ogeron at the front end of that interview is there was a if there was a deadline, if there was a time stamp that they, they were looking at. Uh, that they may get the call on whether or not this game is going to happen. Will it not happen on, on the numbers that LSU has presented to the league office? So we'll have to wait and see. Auburn and Mississippi State postponed, scheduled for Saturday. Seems like LSU is dealing with an outbreak of COVID-19 inside the locker room. Uh, Coach O mentioned there that he did not have uh, the, the details on when that announcement could be made by the league office. He's just going out there getting his team ready to play on Saturday. And uh, he'll do what they, they tell him to. Uh, I want to say in the presser yesterday, I, I think he said like he'd expect something official by Wednesday. Wednesday. So uh, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it started to leak out earlier than that. Uh, but definitely late today, be on the lookout for it, and then to early tomorrow. All right, we'll close that hour one next. Turn off the bench. Off the bench with Kalata and T-Bob.